Welcome to Smoky Ribs, I'm Russ Jones. In today's video, I'm doing beef plate ribs, the thick dino ribs. I'm gonna be showing you my preferred method for doing these ribs. It makes it faster, it's quicker, and they're gonna be extremely tasty. First, I wanna thank my sponsor, Reynolds Wrap. I am a 2020 ambassador for Reynolds Wrap of which I'm just thrilled that they asked me to do that. That's a pretty big deal to me. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm utilizing the Reynolds Wrap heavy duty aluminum foil to make this happen. We're gonna get started right after this. Got the charcoal started over here in a chimney. And right now I'm gonna to put together a binder for this. Now, many of you have watched a lot of my videos. Some have seen me use binders. Some have seen me not use binders. The thing about meat, pork, beef, when you put a, a rub on there with that salt and all, it will extract moisture from the meat and it kind of create its own binder. But there's a, another reason that you might wanna consider using a binder. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. But first, what I'm going to do is take some plain yellow mustard. I'm just eyeballing this, just a couple of tablespoons. And we're also using some Worcestershire sauce. And I'll tell you why here in just a second, why I made this choice or this combination. Now into this, I'm going to probably add about a tablespoon. So the reason I'm using these two ingredients is because they're kind of heavy in vinegar. The yellow mustard and the Worcestershire both start with a vinegar base and from there they add other ingredients. And I'm not so worried about the other ingredients. If any of you have used yellow mustard in the past, by the time it's all said and done, you cannot detect mustard. But let me tell you what it does do. It's got that vinegar, which is an acid, it's acidic, and you're mixing that with the salt that, go, that is in the rub and you're also dealing with the fat. So the vinegar is gonna cut through the fat, it's gonna help balance that out, mix the salt, it's gonna be popping in your mouth, man. It's gonna be a flavor explosion. I've done it with, I've done it without, I'm telling you, it's always better with. All right, so let's take a look at these ribs and see what we got. I sourced these here locally. I want to let you know right now, I'm not removing this membrane. I always remove the membrane on pork ribs. Well, first off, beef ribs are a little different. You do have some meat in between the bones like you do pork ribs, but look at this. Most of the meat is sitting on top of the bones. And it's been my experience in the past when I have removed this is when these get super tender, a lot of times I would pick it up and the bones would just fall out because that membrane is gone. And for presentation reasons, I'm leaving it. As far as the season is, it's all gonna be on the sides and the top. It's not gonna do a bit of good to try to season on this back here. So we're gonna flip this over. And as you can see, we're heavy on fat. I'd rather have some bear meat showing for this rub to stick to. It's already marbled with plenty of fat, intramuscular fat. So this outer fat is really not needed. I'm just going to take and trim this out. I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm just removing the fat. That's all I'm doing, or most of it. Now, if there are some heavy, deep pockets, like the one I'm in right now, I'm not going to gouge that out. I will just leave that be, let it render as much as it will. But all this stuff right on the surface is coming off. So I'm going to keep working at this, and I'll bring you back here in a few minutes once I have it cleaned up. All right, so I'm gonna take this mustard Worcestershire combination here and we're just gonna apply a layer all across the top and on the sides. Going Texas style beef here. We got salt, pepper, garlic. That's what we're using. It's kind of a heavy coarse salt and pepper. It's more pepper 
and salt than it is garlic, but there is a little hint of garlic in this. Nice heavy coat. Like I said, I'm not putting anything on the back. That's just a waste of rub. It can't penetrate. That stuff is like leather. So let's touch up the front here where I touched it. Pat all this in. It seems like a lot of rub. That's a lot of meat. It's going to swell up like this. You need this much rub on it. All right, so I'm just waiting on the charcoal. We're going to get this pit up to around 250, 275, and that's what we're going to run at. I'll bring you back when the meat goes on. So on with these plate ribs. All right, so we're cooking indirect, obviously. Got the fire over here. This is my cooler zone. I'm going to take and add some smoke wood. That's a little bit of hickory. And we're just going to spread it across. Hickory is a little strong, but not too bad, but it pairs really good with beef. It's a big, thick cut of meat, it can take it. So we're gonna put the lid on this. So I've got my lid on. We're just gonna let these temperatures balance out. I'll be monitoring that as well. I'll bring you back probably when it's time to wrap, but I will be checking these about every hour. It's gonna take somewhere between five to six hours to cook these, even with a wrap. Okay, let's take a look. Been going about three and a half hours. We're already starting to get some great pullback. We're actually starting to get kind of a dark color, which I don't want to take it no darker than that. Oh, that, that rub is set. So you can take, and it's really hard to knock that seasoning off. That means it's stuck really good to the meat. Let's do a temperature check between the bones here, about middle ways. That's 162, which is perfect. And we're going to transfer this right over here. Right, let me put the lid back on the, the kettle. So this is the foil that I'm using. This is Reynolds Wrap Heavy Duty. Now, I don't know if you've ever bought the generic brands, the, the private brands of foil, but you can just about see through that stuff. It is so thin, rips so easy. This is what I've always used when it comes to uh, barbecue. It's heavy due to the hold up. Now it does come in 18 inches as well. You can find this and uh, that's really perfect for something that I'm doing today because the way I'm having to do this now is I'm wrapping this away. Then I'm gonna come back and wrap this away. I'm gonna close my ends in, but I want this really I'm not going to say watertight, but I don't want things spilling out. But this is going to work out just fine. Now this is making for very easy cooking, and it's going to be a breeze for cleanup because you just take your meat out at the end, put it on a cutting board, throw the foil away. It's going to have all the juices and everything in there. Just take it and throw it away unless you want to reserve the juices. It's also good at that. It will reserve the juices. We're going to take this. We're going to put them right back on the grill. Now you might notice I am not monitoring this with an internal probe or anything. I'm strictly just checking it every now and then. And what I'm looking for is these ribs to come up to roughly 200 degrees. At that point, I'm going to be probing it with my uh, thermometer. And you don't have to have a thermometer. You can use a sharp toothpick. We're looking for probe tenderness to tell us when these ribs are done but I know from experience that it's usually gonna be somewhere between 200 and 210 nominal right in that range. So I will bring them up to 200 and make a determination at that point when to pull them. But uh, two things this foil is doing, it's gonna preserve the color that they currently have without getting any darker. It's gonna expedite the cook. In other words, it's gonna speed things up. It's gonna shorten the duration of this cook and Fold versus non-fold, let me tell you, fold always delivers a much more tender product at the end. All right, our ribs are done. I just did another probe test, and the temperature I'm reading about 204, 205, which is in that range I was telling you about earlier, but I'm going by the tenderness of that probe just going through like butter. Even through the aluminum foil, it was no resistance, just right through. So I'm gonna go ahead, open the kettle up, 
place them right here on a cutting board. And we're just going to let these sit here and rest maybe 30, 40 minutes. Then we're going to slice into them. Ooh, yeah, buddy. We have been resting now for, I don't know, 30 minutes. Let's unwrap, see what we got here. I know we got a lot of juice because it's seeping out a little. Be careful when you do this because there is a hot steam that's coming out. Oh man, look at that. All right, for the record, one thing you can do at this point if you wanted to, you could take this, put it back on the grill and let it dry that surface out to kind of reestablish that bark that you worked hard to get. I'm not worried about it. It's a soft bark. I'm good with that. So we're going to go ahead and slice into this. So what we got, I'm going to transfer it from the foil onto a cutting board. Be right back. So it is time to cut into this bad boy and see what it looks like on the inside. We're just going to slice right down here and look how tender that is. Holy smokes. Let's pull this around. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at the juice on that. Nice little smoke ring. Look at look how tender that is. Mm. Man, that is like, that is like brisket on a stick. I mean, that is good. That's seasoning, man. It's, it's got a heavy pepper influence. I love that. That's that Texas thing going on. Absolutely pops in your mouth. The flavor is just incredible on this. Kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier when you mix your fats and your salts and your acidity. It just all works for a flavor bomb. This is fantastic. Perfectly tender, nice smoke ring good looks i mean just super juicy i don't know how you could need any better results than that i don't even know how you can get better results than that but i will tell you this this is a big part of the secret right here the reynolds wrap heavy duty foil your pros are using it i use it in my backyard i highly encourage you to try the wrap versus the non-wrap and you draw your own conclusion on that and like i said earlier if you want a crisper bark put it back on the pit for 10 15 minutes it'll dry that top right out me personally man this is ideal this is perfect i'm not crazy over a real hard tough bark myself i just want that flavor that's that's what it's all about so i want to thank my sponsor reynolds wrap once again and i hope you all enjoyed this video until next time smoke your ribs <laughs>